I've spent six hours in Rise of the Ronin slicing, dicing, acting like a stealthy squirrel. I've pet cats, saved troubled merchants, found so much gear, assigned dozens of skill points, liberated settlements, decorated my longhouse, dabbled in crafting, built bonds with people, pissed people off, and I'm sure I've made narrative decisions that are probably going to end badly for me. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this game and there's a lot to do. Some elements of Rise of the Ronin, like the combat and character creator, are done very well. Other components like the physical traversal, narrative, and the overall package, that invisible rope that ties everything together, maybe aren't done as well, but so far they're done good enough that I look forward to continuing my playthrough. So as I mentioned, this game has a great character creator screen. I mean, you can spend a lot of time here. And even better, your creations render in-game spectacularly. No more wondering if that's blush or blood on their face, know what I mean? You can customize not one, but two people for reasons I'll let you learn on your own. And ultimately, your journey will take you through 19th century Japan, when the country is, to put it lightly, amid severe political unrest. This is a Team Ninja game after all, so let's kick it off with the combat. There are several primary weapon options to choose from, like katana, spears, and great swords and secondary weapons like bows and firearms. Square is the standard attack button and you have special abilities called martial skills and a deflection move called counter spark. There are multiple combat styles, weapon proficiencies, four whole ass skill trees, and honestly there's more but no need to get super in the weeds during the preview. And thanks to the three difficulty options, you can make this system as intricate or simple as you want and if that's not enough, there are even more toggles available in the system menu. If you do die, you'll lose your karma, another form of XP, and initiate a vendetta against that enemy. And you know the drill, manage to take him out or smack him with a critical hit and you'll get that sweet karma back. The rush of switching between weapons, rifles, and any allies I have is a butt clenching rush that gets the blood pumping and I know that's a gross visual but that's what it is. Oh and the critical enemy are brutal and badass. You're gonna find and go through a lot of gear in this game. And similar to the combat system, you can really get in the weeds with all of the different stats and buffs each piece of gear comes with. And like any true RPG, more often than not, you will look goofy as fuck. Especially when you're wearing a fedora with a traditional healer's robe paired with western style shoes. Now I've always loved this, but if you always want to look snazzy, you can with a redesign function. This allows you to take any gear you've unlocked, whether or not you still have it, and apply its look to the gear you're wearing. Veiled edge banners are scattered throughout the map and act like checkpoints. Unlock these guys and give them a nice little stroke and you'll find your health, ammo, and medicine restored. But of course there's a catch. You guessed it. It causes defeated enemies to materialize once again. The banners also have another critical use, fast travel. While you can always run from point A to point B, you're going to want to use these to cover ground. There's also a horse and an auto run feature, but I think my horse is missing a few screws because he often gets stuck on small rocks or trees or branches. So I don't use him a lot, but he's still there and I still love him. Ronin's open world is divided into regions called areas. Each area has a bond level and you strengthen that bond by completing that area's open world tasks, like liberating villages, visiting monuments, and the most important, petting cats. Raising area bonds to their max level nets you completion rewards, which I found to be worth chasing after, and so far each area isn't egregiously packed with mindless tasks. They're generally quick and easy and they're great for getting in that mindless open world headspace that I find to be oh so relaxing. Fast travel and silly horses aside, traversal in this game has been just fine. Pulling off a running jump is cumbersome with the default button mapping, and while remapping is available, the sprint and evade buttons are locked to the same input, so it's not super straightforward. The grappling rope is good when it works, but its reach is short, and even if you see a rooftop with an indicator, chances are you can't zip to it. The narrative so far is also fine. I don't get a sense of urgency from the main character, or like they're really, really set out to do this thing they're trying to do. I guess I feel a disconnect with them, and it's a bit early to jump to any conclusions as to why this is, but I hope this changes the farther I progress. I will say though, I love the NPCs. The ones I've met are great. They're eccentric, mysterious, and oftentimes hilarious in their own way. And meanwhile, and I'm not saying this to be an ass, I don't even know if my Ronin has a freaking personality. And maybe this is intentional, as there are multiple dialogue options, and your decisions do impact the narrative. So there's something here, but again, it's too early to really say. There is so much more I haven't talked about due to a lack of time, like how you can lie, intimidate, and persuade in conversations. You can recruit and perform missions with allies. There's a longhouse that acts as your home base that you can freaking decorate. There's a crafting system, like, there's a lot here. Either way, I still have a lot of Ronining ahead of me, and my minor nitpicks aside, I'm looking forward to reviewing the entire package. And on that note, look for my review next week.